Hello, welcome to our presentation. This presentation is about supporting children and young people with low mood and self-esteem. <clears throat> my name is Helena, I'm a trainee educational health practitioner. And my name is Lawrence, I'm also a trainee education mental health practitioner. The purpose of this session is not to train you to deliver therapeutic interventions, but to help you understand how low mood might develop so that you can support your child in a way that might help them to make positive changes. By the end of the session, we should be able to understand what low mood is and how you might recognise it in your child. Understand how low mood is maintained from a behavioural point of view. Understand the connection between low mood, self-esteem and self-critical thoughts and identify some strategies to support children and young people experiencing low mood. If we can ask you to pause the video and take a moment to consider the questions on the slide, you might want to take some notes. There are various signs of low mood. Here are two scenarios. You can pause the video and spot the signs of low mood in our descriptions of Charlie age 9 and Sam aged 15. Do you think that these reactions are similar or different to how adults react to upsetting situations? Adults may tend to be hypervigilant to their symptoms of low mood and react quite quickly, whereas teenagers and children are more likely to avoid acknowledging their symptoms, but will withdraw from activities they used to enjoy. The symptoms of low mood can be categorised under emotions, thinking, behaviour and physical symptoms. Here are a list of some of the symptoms. What do we mean when we talk about low mood? It is completely normal for every, everyone to have periods where they feel sad or low, but this is usually for a short amount of time and resolves itself without intervention. We would consider a child or teenager to be experiencing low mood if they are consistently feeling numb, unmotivated, hopeless, tearful, and this lasts for a longer period of time than you would expect and you get the feeling that your child is not themselves, you don't know how to help them and the usual support that would usually work and cheer them up is not helping. There are certain things that might make experiencing low mood more likely. For example, children who experience anxiety or worry, difficulties at home, bullying, poor performance at school, all events that you might expect would impact you as an adult are also likely to impact children and teenagers. It's worth noting that just because your child has experienced one or more of these events, they are not definitely going to experience low mood. Humans are very resilient. We've already explored some of the things that we as parents and carers or, or, or our children might do when we feel low. The behavioural model of low mood suggests that low mood occurs when life becomes less rewarding or enjoyable. This might be caused by a major life event or it could be something that seems quite small, like a falling out with a friend. In order to cope with what's going on in their life, we know that people adopt coping strategies. Some of these coping strategies might be harmful, such as self-harm or drug taking, and others are not harm harmful in themselves, such as been watching Netflix or spending time alone gaming for hours. However, both can prevent your child from engaging in a busy, active, rewarding life. And what we, we then find is that they can become stuck in a cycle. For example, if your child falls out with a friend they usually attend a club with, they may be less likely to want to go to the club. They may then spend more time at home alone, feeling isolated, which then makes it more difficult for them to rejoin their club and spend time doing things they used to enjoy. This leads to a cycle of continuing to stay at home and continuing to be isolated. It is hard to break the cycle without help. You can help your child to improve their mood by gradually adding in rewarding activities to their day to day life and encouraging them to find ways to bring some enjoyment, pleasure and sense of satisfaction back into their lives. The activities don't have to be grand and they can be as simple as speaking to a friend or completing a task they have been avoiding, like tidying their bedroom or doing a piece of homework. It's important to building activities which provide a sense of achievement as well. So scheduling things like running the hoover around, doing the washing up or visiting grandparents can all help to boost mood. Or look at things they used to do but have stopped doing. The aim is to help your child to start breaking their cycle of low mood and start introducing a new cycle where the improved mood encourages your child to do more, which in turn brings a sense of enjoyment, achievement and increased well-being. 
Please do start with small steps and discuss with your child the activities that feel relevant to them in terms of their potential to provide enjoyment and achievement. We know that when we feel down or low, our brains tend to focus more on our unhappy memories and more difficult thoughts. We also naturally pay more attention to information from the world around us that confirms those thoughts. In this way, having low mood can also affect a person's self-esteem and having low self-esteem can also be a cause of low mood. This is not to say that a person with low mood will always have low self-esteem or vice versa. Our thoughts can also affect how we feel and what we do. When we feel low, it's easy for the thoughts to get stuck on repeat, like a skipping CD. Let's explore an example. Let's imagine a young person becomes stuck with their homework. They may have thoughts like, here we go, stuck again, I'm useless and never get things right. I couldn't do it last week either. Can you think to yourself how they might feel and what they might do? These types of thoughts often lead to avoidance behaviours like walking away, refusing to do the work, getting annoyed with you if you ask them to keep trying or doing something more fun like going on social media or watching TV. Self-defeating thoughts can keep us and our children stuck in a cycle of low mood and low self-esteem. We don't get the chance to come up with a balanced judgment about ourselves and our abilities. When people are stuck in a cycle where their thoughts drive their mood, it can be useful to find ways of helping them to see the bigger picture by exploring the thoughts and trying to work out how true or real it is. After all, a thought is just a thought. It isn't necessarily a fact. It can be really difficult to have successful conversations with children and teenagers who are experiencing low mood. If you don't feel able to do this, please speak to your child's school about a referral to the NHST. If your child or teenager seems willing to talk to you about the thoughts they have, keeping your questions gentle, understanding and non-judgmental will probably help the flow of conversation. It can be really hard to hear your child talking about themselves in a negative way, but try to hold back from immediately stepping in and disagreeing with them. You may be desperate to tell them they're beautiful, clever, funny, or whatever it is that you think will reassure them that they are loved and supported by you. But try to hold back and provide a listening space for them to tell you what's on their mind. You can then try using an open style of questioning to encourage your child to try to take a step back and see the bigger picture. This can be difficult because they are so involved in their lives and the thoughts in their heads, but understanding that there may be other ways of interpreting, inter, interpreting a situation can be helpful in helping them to see that maybe their thoughts aren't 100% true. In fact, then they may not be true at all. The slide show the slide shows how open questions can help children and young people to explore their thoughts. In our sessions with children and young people, we spend time focusing on thoughts in detail, looking at evidence that might be proof that the thought is true and evidence that gives us proof, proof that it may not be true. This process helps the child or teen to balance out their view. We're not looking to change their minds as it is far more likely that they will begin to see themselves in a more positive way if they can be encouraged to find their disproving evidence for themselves. When a child or young person is feeling low or depressed, they can feel very isolated, scared or on edge. They might also feel that no one will understand how they were feeling or they might feel helpless and might believe that they will feel like this forever. If you can empathise and normalise, it can help your child to feel able to share information with you. You can use phrases such as, I can imagine if I thought I would feel too. I can see what you think that would happen if it's happened before. If you think that, I can see why you would feel sad. Making conversations about mental health difficulties a normal part of family life can be helpful as it leaves the door open for your child to approach you if they feel like they need to talk to you about their thoughts or feelings. It can be difficult to start a conversation with a child or teenager without them becoming defensive or trying to push you away. So use your judgment about when might be a good time. 
Many parents tell us that a car journey or a walk is often a time when they can start a conversation. There seems to be something about being side by side with their child rather than face to face that can make it feel easier. Getting into a cycle of low mood and low self-esteem often happens over quite a long period of time. So it, it's worth thinking that it may take a while to help your child or teenager to get back to their normal selves. Our advice is to gently talk to your child without pressuring them about why they think they have become low in mood. Gently encourage them to brainstorm options with you for activities that give them a sense of enjoyment, a sense of achievement and pleasure and activities that connect them to other people. Once you've got some ideas, you can help them to start planning some extra activities into their normal week. You are best placed to help your child with this process, as you will be able to prompt them about things they used to enjoy that you've noticed they've stopped doing, or things that they used to talk about trying. It's important to remember to build their activity levels up gradually so it doesn't feel overwhelming. You can talk to them about acting according to a plan and not their mood. The idea is to just get on and do something because once you've started it, it's fairly easy to keep going. And once you've done whatever it is, you are likely to feel that you enjoyed it or you get a sense of satisfaction from it or you feel that it was nice to spend time with others. It can be really tempting to jump in and solve problems when we see our child in distress. But allowing them autonomy to fix their own problems and problem solve can feel empowering for them, which in turn can boost their self-esteem over the longer term. If you think they want advice, ask. Would you like some advice or do you want me to listen? An example, an example for us grown-ups might be the prospect of cleaning the house. It is the last thing we want to do, but once, once we start, we can keep going with it. Then, once we've finished, we look at the clean house and feel a sense of achievement and pleasure. Here, you can see examples of small steps that can be praised. Above all, remember to trust your instincts as a parent and not hesitate to seek help if you see some of these situations identified in this slide. Remember, you can always approach your child's school to get help. As well as your child's school and GP, there are various organisations locally that can offer support. As you can see, lots of organisations, it might be worth stopping the presentation here and having time to look at these in a bit more detail if you feel you need to. There are also various resources that you can access easily. The following slides explain who we are and what we do. As you can see, the mental health support teams were created from the government's 2017 Green Paper. We work within schools in East Sussex and provide a support service for mild to moderate presentations of low mood and anxiety for children aged between 7 and 17. Our work includes delivering interventions to children and young people, working collaborator collaborator collaboratively with schools, supporting them to put mental health and well-being at the core of their curriculum and providing advice and information. This is a summary of the role of EMHPs in school. If your school is part of the mental health support team, you can talk to them to put a referral forward. Thank you for taking the time to watch this presentation and we hope it's been useful for you.